Hi guys to everyone. Uh, today we are with an historical band, uh, Vicious Rumors, and here we are with Gunner. So first of all, nice to meet you and it's a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, just first of all, why are you since uh, the tough times? Uh, how am I? Yeah. I'm all right. Uh, I've just been trying to stay busy. I've been in here most of the time just you yeah. know, playing guitar and okay, <clears throat> trying not so, to go crazy. Yeah, uh, it's a tough period for everyone. So before speaking about um, issues rumors, I, you jo I was saying before that you joined the band in 2017. But mm -hmm. before I joined the band, did you have some other project? And uh, how was the meeting with the band? So how happened that you joined the mm -hmm. band? So Yeah, so the only band that I had before Vicious Rumors was uh, an original project that I was doing called uh, mm -hmm. Chronological Injustice. And um, I'm still working on that. We're going to kind of rebrand because I, I haven't done anything with that band in, in a little while, but I've been working on, you know, writing some music. Yeah. Um, so we should hopefully be able to release something this year under a new name, new members and everything. So if any old Chronological Injustice fans are still out there, we do still exist. Uh, we're going to be <laughs> debuting a new name, with new music, all that, hopefully this year. Yeah. But um, I'm going to keep it vague for now. Um, but I met, uh, I met up with the Vicious Rumors guys through Brian Allen, a friend of mine who uh, mm -hmm. used to sing for Vicious Rumors. You guys probably know him if you've been listening to me for a while. I believe he joined the band in 2011 or so, somewhere around there. Um, they have, uh, the, in the band uh, the, the has, has been a lot of bit of change of lineup. <laughs> yeah. So he was with the band for a couple albums. Um, yeah. And then he quit for a little while because he got uh, injured in a car wreck. And uh, that was when I met him. Uh, it was when he was just kind of, you know, chilling at home. And um, we sort of became friends. And as he started to recover, um, yeah. I did a couple of, uh, like, you know, just cover show, like, benefit yeah. shows with him. I did two or three. We um, played a bunch of covers. And um, yeah. so I just kind of, you know, became friends with him. And over the years, um, we stayed in touch. And um, one day I, I got a call from him that um, – I guess Fish Rumors had lost their old guitar player. And uh, yeah. Brian told Jeff about me and um, basically just you know, helped me get in contact with, with Jeff. And, you know, I learned some of the songs, you know, did some videos, sent them to him, and, and he was uh, pretty into it right off the bat. So um, it was a pretty quick process. I didn't really have to audition either, which was nice. I kind of just sent him. <laughs> Go straight and, to the band. Yeah, great. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. And Brian was a little jealous. I, I think they put him through the ringer a lot more than they did me. So. <laughs> but, uh, and then he rejoined the band. Briefly, at yeah. uh, the same time I did in 2017, uh, and we did that that Banger Head DVD, uh, one yeah. short tour, and then he quit once again. Uh, so, and, but now we have Nick Courtney. Yeah, and how, so, I, so I, I was saying a fun fact of uh, introducing the, the current lineup of 2022 <laughs> now, if we can say. Right. Uh, yeah, so um, it's still um, a little up in the air, uh, but... From what I understand right now, we're going to be um, starting on uh, our next album, hopefully this okay. year sometime. Um, That's I don't great. know what all the details are exactly. I got to talk to Jeff, but um, we are planning on definitely doing at least one more release, um, you know, in the next next couple of years. That's um, great. Yeah, the current lineup that we have right now is me, Gunnar Gray, uh, Jeff Thorpe has been, you know, That's running cool. everything yeah. since 1979, I think, is when he started the yeah, band. Yeah, uh, the he's legend. been at it about 20. What's that? The legend. Yeah. Yeah, almost, dude. He's yeah. Yeah. Started the band almost twenty years before I was even born. But uh, <laughs> uh, then we got Larry Howe too. He's also been at the band since the beginning, uh, yeah. since their first release. Uh, he's playing drums for us, and then yeah. um, on vocal we've got Nick Courtney. Um, he's a local guy too. He lives in the um, kind of Portland, Oregon area, yeah. like me. Um, Jeff and Larry both live in California, so we're kind of spread out. Uh, and then our bass player uh, is uh, Robin Utbuts, and he's from uh, Sweden. That's where he lives. Um, okay. He used to play from for Sweden, completely in another part of the world. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, we're all over the world. Uh, <laughs> but I think so it's, we, it's good. It's good. Not be just from yeah. one place. It's just a little bit worldwide, different influences. Exactly. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, we found him because we we toured with. Him air raid uh in 2019 we did a big european tour and they were with us the whole time wow. and then they broke up shortly afterward um and then robin was just bored i guess and um we needed a bass player and once uh, cody green left he was our previous bassist and yeah. also the guitar player in my other band <laughs> uh, oh, it's a melting pot basically exactly yeah i only know a couple musicians so anytime we need someone it's, i'm usually hitting up the same couple people so <laughs> <laughs> of course um, so yeah robin's awesome and what's yeah. that 
No, yeah, I mean, I say, of course, I mean, uh, you have like uh, the, someone to call if there is someone that can play. Exactly, oh, yeah. Okay, I'm enjoying this return now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, Alison, I mean, see, when you join the band, um, of course, the band is played on since like, I don't know, we're saying a lot of years. You think mm -hmm. that you brought some of your, your own personal experience as a musician, like you added something new or something of yours inside the sound of the, of the, of the band? I think so. Um, I think one of the, the biggest changes that I made to the band and one of the weird things that I did is I, I play seven strings in the band, which obviously okay, is kind of okay. a more weird modern more technical, yeah. So, granted, I'm not really using the low string very often. Uh, every once in a while, I'll go down a little lower just to like, you know, kind of mm -hmm. harmonize with the, the bass or something. But um, yeah. people definitely seem to be freaked out when they see that most of the time when I'm playing live. And really, the only reason I did that was just because I, I had been playing seven strings for so long by that point that I didn't want to get a six string and get used to that. So I just learned all the songs on my seven that I was used to. Okay. And so then it just kind of good to the sound a little bit, to the notes. Can exactly. Be, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then, you know, I've mostly just played in heavier, like um, death metal bands. Like that was my uh, you know, okay. original music that I tend to write. So okay. we'll go through yeah. your, your, your yeah. own influences as well, of course. Exactly. So yeah. I think a little bit of this, um, you know, there's some kind of darker parts that uh, I was able to add just from my, you know, I, most of the stuff I write ends up being sad and evil sounding. Yeah. Just, I can't it and, <laughs> and how was that, I mean, uh, the, 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 the first time, I mean, you, you were playing live with Jeff, with Jeff, I mean, Jeff, I mean, being with someone with, with, the, mm -hmm. with him is so huge, like, uh, like we said before, an icon. So mm -hmm. how, how did you feel to be, uh, for, for, for example, the first time on the stage with him? Yeah. It was amazing, man. I mean, one of the first shows I did with them was that Banger Head Festival, and that was like 20,000 wow. people. Yeah. And I had just graduated high school like three weeks before that. So I, I had just turned 18. And uh, right as I graduated, uh, we were on a plane to Europe and uh, you know playing the biggest show I'd ever played in my life. So wow. uh, that was pretty crazy. And It's... yeah, super cool. It, it was really surreal. Um, yeah, once I got out there, it was just, you know, business as usual. It was, it was a blast, obviously, but I was just, you know. That's amazing. Ultimately, it's... It's a job, you know? Yeah, of course. It's a job and it's a passion. It's a fun job. <laughs> Most of it anyway. Yeah. I mean, it's not easy in working with music, but uh, if you can, um, you know, combine the passion and the work, it's perfect. Exactly. Yeah, the so, performance is a fun part of the job, but yeah, that's yeah. only about 10% of the time. The rest yeah. is, you know, loading in heavy equipment, negotiating deals. You know, I, I, know. I, work, I work in the backstage as well, you know, so yeah, I know, you know how, how it works. Yeah. <laughs> But for anyone else listening who's not in the industry, it's it's not quite as glamorous as it looks, but has its moments for sure. <laughs> Or at least not until you're, you know, Bon Jovi. Yeah, yeah. And since you were, <laughs> uh, of course, I want to speak a little bit, of course, of the the, the album you were involved, so mm -hmm. the, the last one. But we had there are a lot, a lot of album that if we are going to speak about each one, probably we will be here tomorrow still talking. So <laughs> just want to know, in your opinion. Um, First, which is your favorite album of the band, by your own taste? It could yeah, be one, two, or three, just to choose. Mm -hmm. And which other album would you like to su suggest to the new like a runner -up. generation, to the guys, mm -hmm. girls listening, approaching to the two vicious rumors right now, for example? Yeah, I mean, our first album, Soldiers of the Night, uh, has a lot of really cool guitar work from uh, Vinnie Moore. That was the only album that he was on. And um, we don't play a whole lot of stuff off of that, but um, every song that we you know do on there, I always have a yeah. killer solo that I get to play, which is fun. But um, I think my favorite would probably have to be Welcome to the Ball. I okay. think that one has the most songs that really compel me. And um, I really like a lot of the stuff Mark McGee did on that. And those are the parts that I get to play. And um, I just think he has some really tasteful, cool leads and good songwriting on that one. And uh, yeah. yeah, but I mean, I love the self-titled one too. That's a really close close tie for me um digital dictator is another one of my all-time favorites too that whole those first four albums are, are pretty hard to beat um and the digital dictator we played a whole three month tour doing it every single night so those songs so, are pretty much yeah. in my dna at this point so basically you um, feel the, the song like of course not playing it it's like your your own song as well even if almost, it was yeah. Rotten, yeah yeah we played those together so many times that um in yeah, our last know, show before COVID, naturally Yeah, well, I was going to say our, our last show um, in 2020, we were playing in Europe in March when COVID hit and it, you know, ended really? our tour. We almost got stuck. Where were you? Uh, yeah. In, where, where, where in uh, Europe? 
so we uh we flew into germany first we usually start okay. in uh um because jeff has uh, some family there okay. and um he lives there part of the time as well but um so we usually start there but our first show was in denmark and um okay. it was Viborg, i believe I'm, I'm not sure how you pronounce it but um it, it was a festival of some kind i'm kind of blanking on the name right now but okay. That was the the last show that we played before everything got really crazy. Um, oh and then the following day, I got really sick. And um, luckily, we had four days off, so which is unheard of for us. Usually, we were touring yeah. like nonstop and have almost, almost no time to relax. Yeah. So we had four days, which was a blessing because I was not feeling good at all. And um, during those four days, we were staying at this um, this house. Um, it was a relative of Jeff who had a house in. Um, Oh, I'm, I can't remember the name. I, I it's, it was okay. Kiel, it's okay. Yeah. Way, way north. Oh, and okay. uh, we're kind of sort of in the middle of nowhere. And I was just really sick watching the news. And those four days were when COVID was like really ramping up. It was like around March yeah. 10th, probably. Yeah. Like the 14th, which was, I believe the, first, the last day. Was, the first lockdown. Like the, exactly. You know, yeah. Then. The day that, um, that we were going to leave to go to our next show, the morning of was when Trump announced the travel ban. So then we were all like, shit, you know, are we going to be able to get home? We weren't sure. Oh. How did you um, how did you back home? What's how that? Did you, how did you back home? Well, thankfully, um, it seems like the news definitely um, tried to make it seem like it was going to be way more of like a, an ordeal than it ended up actually okay. being. Like I, I kept seeing pictures of people, you know, like seas of people in uh, yeah. airports trying to make their like layover flights and missing them, and I kept saying they were going to have to get like tested for all this stuff at the airport, and yeah. I was like, dude, I'm sick. I'm totally fucked they're gonna throw me in like a camp while i'm over here in germany and i'm <laughs> never gonna go home i couldn't stop coughing like i might have had covid i i was never able to get tested at the time so i'm still not sure but um thankfully the the day that um we left to our flight was the first day i was able to not cough for a little while and, oh my um, god because yes because if you remember oh, at, the, yeah. at, at the beginning when when someone cough or just needs people what the fuck you're covered yeah like yeah, what was pain going pain. on over there <laughs> it was like you have some like i don't know the black plague or something horrible exactly. happening to you yeah <laughs> so yeah so i was worried about that but thankfully uh, once we got there um We did have to reroute our flight to go through a different okay. airport, but um, I guess they had some CDC checkpoints. Yeah. So once we got there, they had a couple guys in like hazmat suits get on the plane with these questionnaires and they handed them out to yeah. everyone. And it just had some basic questions like, you know, if you've, yeah, been, if you've been exposed to COVID or just came back yeah, from China. Or, yeah, everyone yeah. Said no. yeah, we are dealing with it. We, we are dealing with that today as well. You have been yeah. positive. You are with, uh, I don't know, near to someone positive or not to do this, to that. It's mm -hmm. completely blown. Just absurd, yeah. absurd, completely. I am not, <laughs> I'm speechless. So right now, yeah. especially in Italy, I'm speechless. No one wants to say nothing. <laughs> Just got, um, yeah, Yeah, you were saying. I was going to say, I got sidetracked telling that story, but what I was going to say earlier was, you know, we had that, that show, got canceled. Yeah. We had a bunch more tours for 2020 plan that all fell through also, you know, for our album. So yeah. unfortunately we didn't play for about a year and a half and I, I hadn't really brushed up on the songs hardly at all. Uh, but a few months ago, we got one gig in California. That's and great. so I, I went to go over the Digital Dictator songs again that we played, you know, a million times before that I hadn't played in a year and a half. And I still yeah. remembered them all exactly how they you went. Remember. took almost no practice. Yeah, they're yeah. all still there. So, so, it so it's pretty cool. It was the the first the first show after the the 2020. So and I was it back exactly back, back on the stage after one year and a half. Oh, almost. Great. Yeah, we, it was a fun time. Um, that month was kind of stressful for me because I, I joined two other bands right around the same time and I had shows okay. with all three of them. So you were for just one. And, okay. Yeah, two of them I had to learn a bunch of new material and I had to review the VR stuff. So and it's that good. month of September, I think it was, I had to learn like 90 songs or something. Or oh have my them all god! Down okay. For For different projects yeah it was it was stressful sure, sure, congratulations well, it's not easy it's not easy at all it's not easy at all it's tough sometimes. yeah But, um, yeah once yeah. you get through that though you know everything's easy from there um it's like when the I show am, is awesome yeah it's like when i for example nine nine or eight interview per day and i get confused and i exchange name of the band sometimes of the people yeah, questions exactly, yeah. yeah but then you get used <laughs> to that and okay you start to It's too big, okay. One and another one, yeah, yeah. Mm. And just speaking about the last album, because 
in 2020, uh, there is a celebration decay. So you are yeah. now a constant in the band. So our, mm. how about, uh, sorry, my English is going to fuck off. Uh, what about right. the composing and the topic about this album? So because I want to speak about this album, but your, by your, through your point of view. Yeah, uh, so we started recording it, or I started doing my parts at least okay. uh, November of 2019, I believe. Okay. So just before 2020 was uh, when I flew down to California okay. to, to do all my parts. And uh, Jeff obviously is, you know, the main songwriter. He had the framework of most of the songs. Um, okay. But two of uh, the ones on the album were ones I wrote, uh, Masquerade of Good Intentions and okay. um, Asylum of Blood were the two that, uh, that I wrote start to finish. Uh, and Jeff, you know, added some parts too. But okay. that's kind of how we tend to do it. Usually one of us will write most of a song. And yeah. the other one will just kind of put a solo or yeah, maybe a harmony course. or, yeah, yeah, no, or something like that. But yeah, yeah. Jeff does the bulk of it for sure. Yeah. Um, and then I just, I think I have a solo on all but like two songs. Um, so I, I'm at least featured in, in almost all of them to some degree. Uh, and then, you know, obviously doing the, the rhythm guitar parts throughout as well. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was really cool getting to write, you know, a different style than I was used to. Like I said, I never Yeah, really now to be able to speak about... Go. Yeah, not before, so. yeah, now we're going to speak yeah. about that because it's uh, as a, if we are not probably, I don't like to say Poison Rock is a web zine, it's say like a project, but m many of the bands that we interview are most from, came from that metal. I don't know why that metal, yeah. just, it happens. It happens yeah, for whatever true. reason. <laughs> I don't know. I think they still... get into it, they get really good, and then they realize I can't make any money playing that, so then they go do other stuff. <laughs> That's yeah. why I'm, I'm in a country band now. <laughs> <laughs> country music? I play that as well, yeah. That's really? one of the bands I'm in. Which yeah. band? Which band? If you want to mention, uh, it's cool. Yeah, they're, they're called the Robert Henry Band. They're all local as well, but um, yeah, it's, yeah cool. it's all old school, like cowboy country. It's a couple friends of mine, and I get to gig uh, a lot with them, so that kind of kept me busy. That's amazing. Uh, I love country yeah. a lot. Yeah, it's amazing. And, I, uh, I, I like the old school, you know, honky tonk stuff, I think is a lot of fun. Yeah. Not a big fan of the more modern stuff usually, but yeah, and but it's been about, fun. Yeah. yeah, and speaking about that, just um, <laughs> first I want to go as guitarist. So as a new musician, which guitarist, mm -hmm. it can be, I don't know, guitar hero or just, you know, shredder, whatever, influence your way of mm -hmm. playing guitar. Oh man, there's a lot. I mean, I think my original one yeah. was, Probably, probably Dimebag Daryl was the biggest one okay. for me at first. I actually, I have a portrait of him over here. Oh, it's mounted on the wall. Okay, never mind. I was going to pull it down, but I've had a <laughs> portrait of him in my studio for probably 10 years that I found in uh, Texas, too, which is kind of wow. funny. But yeah, Dimebag was, was kind of my hero when I was younger. He's, uh, you know, the main main reason that I stuck with guitar and I wanted to keep playing writing. Um, him and then uh, there's a band called Protest the Hero. That's okay. not quite as well known, but um, they're like a progressive rock slash metal okay. band that I was okay. really really into when I was younger. And those were the two bands like I pretty much learned every song, every riff, okay. every like lick you could possibly learn from them. And so starting off, that definitely shaped my style more than anything else, which made for kind of a weird progressive groove metal almost yeah, kind of combo. Yeah, it's, it's weird, like a couple like kind of. Yeah, one is more like yeah. is more like I don't know, like more spontaneous. Another one is more studied, you know, more technical. Exactly. But in a combo, yeah. could be it's a really it's good. It's a technique with spontaneous, yeah. like a like a paradox, mm -hmm. basically. <laughs> but, yeah, just about. yeah, you were saying before uh, that you were into that metal. So now I want you just uh, uh, this is a tedious question. Um, most of musician wants to give me when I ask these things, but. You have to pick five albums, albums. So just take your time. That influence you, Gunner, as musician, as human being, especially like like you as per, you as person. Mm -hmm. Since you were a child, you were a child till today. Mm -hmm. So just pick five. Um, uh, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Okay. It's a tough question. But... So, I mean, I'd have to start with the Pantera album. I'd say. Okay. Um... I'm always torn between um, Vulgar Display of Power and Far Beyond Driven. Okay. As okay. for my favorite, I, I really can't decide. One of those two. Okay. Um, I'll just say Boulder Display of Power for the for the okay. sake of the conversation. Um, and then I'd have to say Fortress by Protest the Hero was the other album that I was okay. totally obsessed with. I still have a tattered tab book from that I got when I was like 10. It's like falling apart. Wow. All that used to go through. <laughs> 
So, so I pretty much learned. Yeah, I've had that thing forever. It's you know still a lot of cool stuff in there. Um, after that, um, I'd say probably Autotheism by The Faceless. That's one of my okay. favorite albums. Uh, a lot of cool. That's when I started to get more into death metal. Okay. Um, kind of cool, weird, jazzy stuff here and there, and that you know sort of expanded you know my way of thinking with music. Um, of course, it's important. I'd say Guthrie Govin's another one of my. He's probably my favorite guitar player of all time at this okay. point. Um, that album, Erotic Cakes, that he did, like that. Every time I'm feeling uninspired with guitar, like if I'm feeling kind of burnt out, I go listen to that and try to learn some of his stuff, and I'm immediately inspired yeah, again. Yeah. Like he's just such an insane player yeah um and then i think the ultimate for me now my probably my favorite band of all time these days so it would have to be opeth um i'm a huge opeth fan but i, I didn't discover them until a couple of years ago but um yeah, once i did they're, like again they're they're great, completely changed the way that i approach songwriting and music great. and yeah they really they opened my eyes to yeah. possibilities um i think my favorite album by them again it's it's such a toss-up but um Probably either Ghost Reveries or uh, Blackwater Park. Okay. One of the two. I feel like most Opeth fans, that's their answer. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, they are. I do really love them. Band. Yeah, well, and uh, yeah. if you would be, for example, I don't know, an organizer of festival or planner or whatever, you have, you can choose, uh, I don't know, the country where you settle the festival and the band that could be nowadays band, band of the past, band from the last mm -hmm. century, musician. You can be even from Mozart to, I don't know, Morbid Angel. It's up to you. You, you can, it's okay. your own personal festival. You can even so, settle into Mars. It's up for you. So just like a, <laughs> uh, a lineup of my, my favorite bands at a festival? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Um, yeah. I like so many different kinds of music. That'd be a, a, definitely a weird festival, but... Um, it doesn't matter. It's, it's your festival. You are yeah. able to decide what you if want or not. Yeah. I mean, if we're sticking with, with metal, I'd say the, those five bands I mentioned okay, earlier perfect. would have to be on there for sure. Perfect. perfect. Um, Meshuggah is another one of my absolute favorites. Yeah, They're really the best. I agree with Not that. They are amazing. They are amazing. They are uh, completely, when I saw I them, breathing. they're like, oh my God, it's like, I don't know, but they are too perfect. Too perfect. I've still never seen them live, unfortunately, but I'd love to. One God see it because live it's yeah. like, fuck, it's impossible to play like that. So perfect. So They're every, so every, every the, the rhythmic part, the, 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 the solo part, it's all connected. There is no the discording it's a, it's impossible almost they are monster yeah. they are not human they are monster i agree yeah yeah <laughs> and just speaking about so, always uh, vicious rumors there is some good memories mm -hmm. that you have with them i don't know something happened during the rehearsal or something happened during some touring sorry say that one more time and um, speaking also of course about vicious rumors do you have some funny or good memories uh, i don't know something that uh, for example happened during the rehearsal or something that happened during some tours or live or whatever. Um, i mean once again there, there's so many things um <laughs> just, we've spent so much things, time just have the first things that uh, comes from your jump in your one of the, the goofiest uh, stories that I have from the road that always seems to make people laugh was um, we we're playing this show in uh, Poughkeepsie, New York, which mm -hmm. is uh, you know, suburb, maybe, well, maybe not a suburb, but it's about an hour from New York City. Mm -hmm. And uh, we finished the show and uh, there's a um, uh, fried chicken place right across the street. And I went over and got some chicken, came back to the van. I was waiting for the other guys to get back so we could go yeah. to our Airbnb. And um, Jeff and Cody, our old bass player, finally came back to the van. They were the two that we were waiting on. They opened the door and they both saw my chicken and they're like, oh, fuck, dude, where'd you get the chicken? And I was like, this place over here, but like, you know, hurry up, we want to go home. And I'm like, okay, fuck, like, we got to go get some chicken first. Like, we'll be right back. So oh Nick, Larry, and I are all just in the van, like, waiting for him to finish. And um, the funny part of the story, I actually didn't witness myself. It was Cody and Jeff that saw it, but okay. they told me the story. So I, I so think I can confidently tell them. <laughs> what happened from like Cody's perspective so he told me that they both walked into the chicken place and there was this um woman just like collapsed on the ground like you know um hyperventilating <gasps> okay, okay. <gasps> like a sort of panicking something like that yeah no she's having some sort of episode yeah they walked in and were like whoa you know what's going on yeah of course and they kind of stood there for a second and we're like what do we do you know should we you know, uh, should we try to help or something? And, you know, she's sitting there and some of her friends were around her. Um, so they're like, okay, well, like, let's just order, I guess. 
So they, you know, went around the like dying woman on the floor and they were about to start ordering their food. <laughs> and um, right as they were getting ready to, she like let out this like big breath, I guess. She was like, <gasps> oh my God. Stopped. And like, yeah, whole place goes silent. And her friends are like on the phone with 911. Like, yeah, she just stopped breathing. Like, you know, kind of whispering. And whole place is dead quiet. And then after a couple of seconds, the clerk just goes, yeah, so we've got some great deals on the uh, on the tenders right now. And he starts like <laughs> pitching all the uh, right, the combos awesome. to him as this yeah. like person is like you know possibly dying right in front of me. Just couldn't didn't couldn't care less. No. You know, one in the morning, you probably wanted to go home. Saw that shit all day every day. Oh um, so they got their chicken and left, and luckily the woman ended up being fine. Uh, as yeah. we as they got back to the van and we were about to leave, a you know ambulance pulled up and we yeah, her out. She was okay. I mean, at least that, that, that woman was safe. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the lack yeah. Of compassion for it was pretty funny to me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, just to... yeah, always stuff like that going on. Just speaking about uh, um, your um, what's what are doing vicious rumors right now? Uh, you know, I haven't really been able to do much with them lately because you know, obviously, we're all so far apart and we're not really yeah, gigging. Of course. And, um, that's you know most of my uh, part of the band, uh, but you know I've been doing a little bit of writing, just kind of trying to prepare for the next album. And um, okay, so you are no yeah, that's really all I've been able to do concerning okay. the rumors lately. Uh, so you it, you do not have some lives or gigs festival plan for 2022? We do have a, okay. Yeah, we do have one in the works. We're trying to um, plan a U.S. tour for next okay. month. Uh, it's mostly confirmed at this point. We just okay. got a couple couple of gigs to go, so. I don't think it's uh, you know fully announced or confirmed or anything yet, so okay. um, there's still a chance that COVID could get in the way of that. But yeah, we're definitely trying, yeah. trying to get back out on the road uh, this year, and um, the, cool. the U.S. tour is looking pretty promising. Yeah. Uh, and then I think Europe is pro probably still going to have to wait till next year, but yeah. there's a chance we could get over there this year again. We're we're trying, but everything's so up in the air; it's just really hard. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, every every day is like what will happen today and tomorrow. So yeah. it's like you can what? you can book, you can do something, prepare, but there is always the if the question mark. Yeah, in, uh, in that this is oh, the, yeah part of the yeah. Part of the problem that we run into is since we're so spread apart, uh, yeah. um, you know, the only time we can all get together is if we're like going on tour and, you know, yeah. getting paid to make it all happen. So, you know, we're usually able to book a couple shows in certain places, but then some of them will fall through and then that kind of ruins yeah. the tour and then the finances aren't there and then we just, yeah. the whole thing fizzles out. So even though we can get, you know, maybe 75% of them booked, if 25% fall through, then that ruins the rest. Yeah, of course. It's, so, it's not you um, being. That's, it's being Spread, spread the here and there, yeah. And there. yeah but that makes it pretty hard. Yeah, um, that's what I've been doing just kind of more local stuff just to stay busy mm -hmm. in the meantime. You know, the country band, and then yeah, playing on I mean, tribute band too with Nick Courtney, he sings in that one as well. That's good to um, know as well. So, yeah, it's all like I'm made in Northwest. It's a, like a, a side project, to the you both exactly. have. yeah, 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 just to have just, fun, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, keep me good. gigging and. Yeah, it's good because you keep it busy as yeah. well. Yeah, because just exactly. you waiting and waiting and waiting for vicious rumors and going live, playing live, could be really tough and uh, yeah, yeah exactly. and frustrating. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So yeah, that's why I've just been trying to branch out, diversify no, no, a little it's, bit. It's least. good as well, as well because you can maybe have some, you know, maybe you 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 could have even doing some I don't know playing some gigs just. With other bands, some have some ideas for the new albums as well, some riffs, yeah, some exactly. of course. Mm -hmm. So maybe I don't know. You will put some com some country riff in the next song. Well, funny enough, one of the uh, the main country techniques that you see on guitar a lot is called chicken picking, which is um, okay. where you, if you're not familiar or anyone listening, you hold a pick in one hand and then you like hit strings with your fingers too okay. while you're playing. That's a common thing country players do, but it's it's a technique that I had to learn for the country band, and I've actually found myself using it a lot in my metal stuff too. So <laughs> that's something that I might end up using in. So yeah, right. so you bring yeah, so, at, so like where we the first, one of the first questions I told you that you bring that you, your own influences to the band, so you're still doing yeah, it. So yeah, another one could be in there yeah, for sure. That's great. That's great. <laughs> So just before ending, if you want just to say something about so to vicious rumors fans and 
all the fan people that are watching this interview right now and uh, we are this is best uh, just want to thank you guys all for sticking with us through this uh, tough couple of years um hope you all love the album i'm really bummed that we couldn't go out and play it for you uh when it came out but um we're hoping that we're going to be able to get out you know sometime this year or next and we're definitely going to be doing some yeah. songs off that album so any big fans of that one rest assured we will still be playing it um and um hopefully we'll have another uh, killer album for you in the next year or two as well and then we can you know debut both of those around the same time maybe yeah. but uh yeah it's been a great time and uh you know i feel really blessed to, to to be in this band and that's you know an opportunity to see so much of the world and play for yeah. so many people and it's been yeah. really awesome so, thank you all that's all i have to it's say a, it's, an, it's an amazing man so thank you so much Gunnar. and uh, i don't know let's see if uh, we will be possible to have a physical interview in 2023 in, yeah. in further year so thank we you so much and i'll keep you posted when this interview will be live yeah. thank you so much have a, a, have a good evening thank bye. you you too bye